Show.com, the Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Doing some testing today. We're trying to broadcast the uh, Chris Voss Show live on Twitter using Periscope. Uh, holy crap, Periscope is still a thing. Who knew? <laughs> Anyway, guys, uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, be sure to refer your friends, neighbors, relatives, and subscribe to the show at the CVPN or Chris Voss Podcast Network dot com. You can see all of our wonderful shows and everything we're doing there and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, we just kind of relaunched and redid uh, the Resistance Radio dot com, which is our political podcast. It used to be called Chris Voss on Politics. Uh, but we changed it. We like the resistance radio much better. Kind of an homage to that, uh, um, kind of an homage to that, uh, the French resistance radio, if you will. It's kind of how I feel half the time. I feel like, uh, sometimes I'm just broadcasting in this sort of environment going, holy shit, what's going on in the world? But the Chris Voss show really doesn't cover politics. I just figure we plug the resistance radio show. So if you get a chance to check that out and all that good stuff. So uh, you can also find it on Resist Radio Pod on Twitter. Resist Radio Pod on Twitter. And uh, you can check it out there. Give the account a follow. I'd certainly appreciate that. Um and, uh, yeah, let's talk about the news, what's going on in our world. I don't really have any uh, business topics like we normally discuss in the Chris Voss show. Uh, but uh, what I do have is um, some kind of advice on what's going on with current times. I hope everyone's healthy. I hope everyone's doing well with this sort of quarantine thing. I hope everyone's, um, you know, uh, not caught in the virus and all that good stuff. I'm going to pray and hope that that is the way things are going for you and your family and your loved ones, everything else. So uh, let's hope that goes down that way. Um, there's uh, a lot of different business things that are that I've been looking at because you've if you've heard me talk in the previous uh, broadcast that we've done in the Chris Voss show. And by the way, you can go subscribe to those on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, our heart radio. Uh, we're everywhere at the Chris Voss show. And, uh, we've talked about some of the different ways that people can kind of start approaching our new business, our new life that we're going to take and have, um, where things are going to be very, very different, probably at least for the next year or two until they come up with some sort of vaccine for this virus and how it's going to change our daily lives and our work lives. So, um, in my prior shows, we talked about some of the different, uh, aspects that I was pulling from, um, that I was pulling from uh, my experience in 2008 when things got really bad in the Great Recession. And this is kind of a place we're moving to now. Uh, not to depress you too much, but the numbers are not good. Um, oh, I think we're up to like 22 or 26 million people have filed for unemployment as of now. Uh, people are A lot of people are probably still writing on their savings. So, uh, And I know there's people who haven't been able to file. So there's that issue as well. Um So I think it's going to get pretty bad, and we're probably going to see um, unemployment numbers close to the Great Depression. Um, And so the biggest question is, how are we going to deal with this? What are we going to deal with this? What are we going to do? Now, we've gone through this month of where we've all been in quarantine or a little longer than a month for some of us um, to avoid uh, overloading the hospitals. And it seems like right now the hospitals have been able to play catch up, or at least they're getting there to play catch up. And... We um, are trying to open up business again, and I guess we're going to have to balance filling the hospitals with people and uh, getting infection and, uh, you know, trying to either, I guess, get herd immunity of some type, although we don't know much about this virus. Um, But there's going to be a lot of people that are unemployed, and employers are going to have to make some new choices. One of the things I've been sitting down and thinking about, what are employers going to have to deal with? What are employers' um, challenges that they're going to take and have with people um, and their employees? Uh, one of the things they're going to have issues with is this whole keep business, uh, keep people apart by six feet. It's going to be pretty challenging. Uh, you know, most restaurants, when they build restaurants or most places of business, they're designed to be very compact. They're designed to pack people in and uh, maximize the use of office space. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of um, challenges if you run a type of business like a bar or a restaurant or something of that nature, even like I, I guess we're seeing in the next week or two 
We're seeing shops that are going to be open uh, for haircuts, tattoo salons. And so the new challenge of being in business is dealing with uh, these aspects of where you have to keep people six feet apart. And, uh, you know, is that cost effective for you? Certainly most restaurants, you know, they, you know, when they equate their business models, they're looking at number of tables they have in their place, number of service, uh, occupancy, all that sort of good stuff. Um, but they won't be able to fill it with the, uh, amount of people that they need to maybe make the huge amount of profits they used to have to. And of course that's going to trickle down to a number of employees that you're going to keep on and uh, amount of business you're going to have. And so, there's a lot of hard choices business have to make. Uh, one of the other choices that you're going to have to think about if you own a company like a business setting where the employees show up to work and work in, say, cubicles or something of that nature, you're going to, of course, have to start investing more in uh, cleaning and uh, disinfecting. There's, I see, I'm seeing a lot of disinfecting companies are coming online that are good at coming in and defogging everything. I remember we used to do that years ago. Um, we had a big telemarketing uh, a dialer. We had about 50 people in a dialer. And I remember <laughs> I remember my vice president who was in charge of all the uh, telemarketers. He, after he would close down at night, he would take uh, two Lysol spray cans and he'd literally start at the back of the room and back himself out of the office. It was this long sort of corridor office that we had and he would back himself out of the rooms just blasting freaking Lysol uh at the time we were in Los uh, Salt Lake City Utah and so the flus here get really awful I mean just scary awful and uh the schools all right did I say the schools the state here gets uh, super sick but the schools act as super breeders for any sort of virus and so they just share it with everybody and it's crazy. So um, he would just walk out of the office just blasting two cans of Lysol and uh, back himself out of the office, close the door, of course, and you're just like, ah, hopefully that's all cleared up in the morning. <laughs> this is like defogging the the whole office uh, at the end of every night, mainly because we didn't want you know our employees getting sick. So uh, this is our new world that we're going to have to live in. We're, uh, we're going to be ultra clean. We're going to have to be ultra good about uh, sharing, um, about sharing, uh, uh, not sharing the virus, if you will, about how to, um, you know, uh, uh, not pass it around. Everyone, of course, is going to have to get used to wearing masks. But uh, if you're an employee uh, or an employment company that with, if you're a company with employees, let's put it that way. I'm actually f screwing around here on the side. Um, you're going to have to probably look at doing more of this at home business. I, I really think that what's going to happen out of this is this really going to force us to become a society where people work at home. Now I've been working at home since I was 2000, since 2004. Uh, I've always had my own business. So I was, I had the ability to work at home since 2004 and I'm fairly comfortable with it. Um, as you can see, you know, wearing a hat probably wearing clothes from God knows when and uh, probably need a shave. I don't know. You shave. And uh, of course my hat's covering my scruffy hair that hasn't had a haircut in, I don't know, six weeks or something. <laughs> we need scissors. <laughs> so, um, but we're, you're probably gonna have to adopt your business model to where you are allowing more employees to stay home, work from home, partially because your employees now have real issues with schooling if they have kids. So uh, it looks like some school systems are out for most of the year or all of the year uh, in the school year. Uh, I know New York, Bill de Blasio was talking about canceling the next school year, and Governor Cuomo kind of squelched that a little bit. So I don't know what that's going to happen, but you may want to prepare for it in your business models of like, okay, so do we need to start looking at uh, you know how, how we performed at having people at home? doing these zoom meetings and, and, and how's the work productivity gone and can we keep doing this? Now I've, I've of course worked, advised, counseled, consulted with a lot of different companies in technology that are used to working from home. In fact, usually I know people that have app companies and stuff and, uh, and online software companies that their employee base is around the world and they're used to zooming in. They've been doing this for like 10 years. They're used to zooming in. They're used to doing everything. And, you know, there's one guy in Prague. There's another guy in Russia. There's another guy in Venezuela. Another guy in Europe. Another guy in U.S. Another guy in Japan. And they're used to this. And so I think this is going to force a lot of companies to, um, 
have people just stay working at home and and this is going to affect some other things too there's going to be some effect on um cons- uh, on uh, commercial buildings because normally now you know and it used to be you'd be like okay well, let's buy a commercial building or rent a commercial building and fill it with a whole mess of people and how much profit does that make when we fill it with x amount of square footage of employees yada yada, yada. now you got to put this six foot rule into everything and it, i think it's going to be a challenge i think it really is and uh, it, i think it's going to make a difference and if you own a business i think you're going to want to put um that sort of uh, mentality into what's going on and what the future is going to bring. And you're going to have employees that are going to have to choose between you and other employees that might pro- provide better uh, child care because a lot of these people are going to have their kids working at home. So you're probably going to have at least one parent working at home and they're going to have kids. Uh, you may want to look at, uh, um, you may want to look at business wise in your business model, maybe doing something that has an educational format, like as a benefit to your employees, where, hey, if you come to work for us, we give you free accounts with, uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, education site that uh, does the video education. Um, oh, God, who is it? Khan Academy, the Khan Academy. So you may want to give away free Khan, Khan, uh, Khan Academy. Um, uh, you know, subscriptions or whatever the hell, you know, buy a whole bulk of those. Maybe you want to cut back your weekdays. I mean, one of the things that we've had in America that's been so mind boggling is other countries have moved to four day weeks. Other countries, uh, like the French, I believe, uh, operate with different things where, uh, you, you know, you, you, you just, you just don't work eight hours a day. And it may be time that we take a look at, what some of these models are here and how we have to redesign them so that people can go home and, and school their kids and do different things of that nature. We are not going to go back. I mean, you just have to accept it. We are not going to go back any time until there's a vaccine and all of us can get vaccinated and stuff. That or herd immunity kicks in. That's probably going to be a year or two down the road too. Um, and, and Or until we can get everyone tested. I mean, the beautiful part would be we get everyone tested and then we go, okay, everyone just got tested right now. You're sick. You go in quarantine. The rest of us are going to work because we know that we can't affect, infect each other. But, you know, this this virus is tricky, though, because it has, I believe, a two-week incubation time. So you can kind of maybe test that you have it, and then sometimes these tests aren't right. There's a whole mess of different issues. So as a business, you're going to have to start looking, or if you're an entrepreneur, because we talk a lot about entrepreneurism on the Chris Foss Show, uh, you're going to have to start looking at new business models for business as to keeping these distance, uh, keeping your scale to where you have this factor of six feet, you've got masks for everybody, you've got different policies in place, you're going to have to put in new policies where you say, hey, you know, you've got to stay, I mean, the nice thing is, is there'll probably be a lot less sexual harassment lawsuits and sexual harassment complaints at your business because everyone's going to stay six feet away from each other. So there's no having sex on the Xerox copier anymore. At least, I don't know, that would probably still happen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was my biggest problem when we had our business was anytime we got like a hot secretary or a hot employee, there was always, a, you know, a bunch of the guys wanted to, you know, hang around and leer at them and, and hit on them. And, and so now, you you know, they can keep six feet away. And it's it's not quite as hot to hit on someone or you're not quite as hot if you're wearing one of those masks. <laughs> Ooh, baby, that's a nice mask you got on there. Ooh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Want to come over to my place later? We can Netflix and sit six feet apart. So you definitely want to take a look at some of these business models. And what's going to change? You're going to have to have policies in place. So your HR department is going to have to sit down, start designing policies because there is going to be a liability. Um, I think a lot of lawsuits are going to come out of this COVID-19 thing when we get done with it. I think there are going to be lawsuits against news agencies that were deceptive. I think there's going to be lawsuits against uh, the cruise lines. I think they're going to to have some huge-ass lawsuits. Um, And... uh, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of liability that's going to be out there as a business to, uh, if you give a customer, or if you give an employee COVID-19, they die, you got a wrongful death lawsuit, you know, it just, it just gets crazy. And so you're going to have to spend a lot more money in cleaning your offices 
uh, in, in making sure that everything's sterile. Uh, you're going to probably have to invest in those fever forehead testers where they can test the fevers. You're like your HR department's going to have to have a very strict policy of like, you do not show up to work. If you've been coughing, if you're sick, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's going to be really interesting, uh, from the aspects of running a business, being an entrepreneur or being a large company and what you're going to have to deal with now, because the game is changed and it may be changed for a long time until we can get this under control. And even then, who knows, there might be another virus that can come next. Um, there might be other issues. Hopefully we can, you know, reach a point in our society a couple of years from now where we can go back to normal, but. Like I said, it's going to affect a lot of people. There's going to be people that are going to be out of work in mass. I mean, we we could be looking at Great Depression numbers. Uh, we already. I was watching somebody today talking about where they're almost at twenty percent unemployment in their city or county. And during the Great Depression, the highest numbers they had for unemployment were ten percent. If you go back and Google Wiki, the Great Depression, for the large part, for most of the, I believe it's for four years that it ran. Um, it was a, it was an average of 10% of the nation was out, but in the high numbers, it was about a quarter of the nation, about 24, 25%. Um, yeah, I believe in the early days or you know, throughout somewhere, but, uh, we're, we're there, man. When you're seeing, if we're at 26 million people unemployed, there's almost 330 million people in this place. Um, it's starting to get a little freaking crazy. And there, there's a lot of people that have been hurt by the economy that don't register for self-employment. I don't register for self-employment, or I'm sorry, unemployment. I'm self-employed. I really don't need, I'm, I'm still making income from my various sources, but I have taken a substantial freaking financial hit um, this year. I will not be earning anywhere near <laughs> what I was used to making until, you know, they get shows again and they get all sorts of other things going in again or I get some other different revenue streams going. And so technically you could actually say I was unemployed. Um, but you know, I, I still have some income, uh, coming in enough to survive. Thank God I, I cut up my overhead to go write a book in Utah. So, um, I put everything in storage, got rid of the big house a few months ago, came up to write a book and holy shit. I'm really glad I did. I, I would be really stuck right now if I had a big house. I don't have a wife and kids, so I'm lucky that way. And um, I didn't make any major purchases because I was planning on taking a year off to write this book. So I'm in a really good position for, for where I'm at. But I really empathize with a lot of people that, you know, they've got two or three kids. They've got, a, you know, wife and kids or husband at home. And, you know, they've got all these expenses. They've got, you know, new cars they may have bought, new houses they may have bought. Um, credit card debt up the wazoo. I mean, this is, uh, this is a challenging time for everybody. So I definitely empathize with people that are, um, having trouble, but, uh, there's a lot of people that aren't going to be registered on the unemployment rolls that really are unemployed. We went through this in 2008, 2009 in the great recession. There was a lot of people that were dual households and, uh, dual incomes. And when the layoffs happened, just one person stopped working, but they didn't register for unemployment. So it never did get counted. They just had the employment numbers technically go down. But since they sometimes counted by households, it really didn't, there really wasn't a true measure of that. And I think we're going to have the same thing with this. But we're seeing extraordinary unemployment filing numbers. And a lot of people just haven't even gotten the file. So I think there's still a tail off of people that can do the filing. I've seen a lot of my friends, like I said, talking on Twitter about how they, they, they haven't even gotten registered for their unemployment. They've been trying for weeks. They call for hours on a day on hold. They can't get the people. Um, it's pretty freaking crazy right now, but this is going to affect the economy. So even if you have a business model where you're looking at, okay, so can we be sustainable? Can we make a profit or can we at least break even for the next year or two um, so that we can, you know, pay our bills, keep our key employees that we need to take and do and just try and keep functioning? Certainly, 
some of these different models are going to make a difference in your uh, ability to make money. I mean, there's a lot of restaurants that if you if you put six feet away on their tables and stuff, you're going to seriously impact the number of employees they can employ. You're going to seriously impact the amount of profit or whether or not they can break even or something. Uh, the restaurant business is a tough business. And so um, I, I don't know how hairstylist salons are going to do it and all that sort of good stuff. My biggest fear would be liability. Um, liability of giving someone the virus, getting sued, uh, wrongful death lawsuits. Uh, geez, I mean, it's just, it's just fucking crazy what you have to think about with some of these business aspects. And if you're starting a business, like I said, we, we talk about a lot of this on the Chris Foss show. These are also some of the sort of aspects you're going to have to think about and worry about when you go into business. Um, and it may be more, you want an online business, but uh, you're definitely going to have to think about these things, what they're about. Um, if you're a company, you may want to start looking at I, – I don't fully understand this technology, but I'll drop the information here. I was watching the Army Corps of Engineers, the head of the Army Corps of Engineers. He was talking about how in hospitals – they have to do uh, uh, like a reverse air conditioning or reverse air suck where instead of having a circulating air where mm -hmm. the air is circulated through a normal air conditioning system or a heating system, you know, it sucks the air in, pumps it back in. They have to create a system where it sucks the air out and puts it outside so that it's not recirculating the disease through the air. Uh, if you saw recently in the Chinese um, – Diagram, uh, I guess, of an example they found with a someone who sat in between three tables. The person who was infected sat in the middle table, and the the two outer tables of uh, I think four or six other people got infected. And they think that a large part of it was the circulating air in the air conditioning. So you're going to have to take a look at some of these things. There may be different things you need to do. Um, not to spread the virus in a air conditioning circulated air environment. Uh, that, of course, runs into some costs. I think if you're a large company, that's something you may really want to take a look at doing. I don't know, you know, I, I don't even know uh, where to go with, you know, HEPA filter controls and different things that could kill viruses so that they are not circulating throughout your offices because otherwise you're just floating in a pool of, of, uh, of viral contamination and spreading it to everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe the thing to do is if you have an office, just tear the roof off and make it an open air office. I mean, that's probably about the best thing you could do. Hey, everybody, we're uh, we're having the office out at the park these days. We're just going to set your desks up at the local recreation park and and uh, run the phone lines out there. And uh, and uh, yeah, everyone's going to get fresh air, plenty of sunlight. And away you go. So um, let me know if you're watching the stream right now or listening to the stream on Twitter. I'd love to hear what some of your business thoughts are as to what's going to change for us in business, what some of the aspects we're going to have to look for, and uh, what's going to be the difference. But, yeah, I think a lot of employers are going to have to consider the fact that their employees are probably going to have to have at least one parent at home that can, that's going to need to do schooling, uh, child care, et cetera. I don't know how child care is going to operate in the future. I mean, certainly, I mean, here in Utah, for 40 years that I've known this state, their schools act as a breeding ground for flus and sickness. When I used to live here uh, 20 years ago, um, you would get like, I don't know, the Chinese virus or I forget what it's, you know, some weird uh, cold that you would get, sinus infection. You would get that in like December and then you'd beat it. And then that motherfucking thing would come back worse after it went through the schools and became these viral bleed, breeding centers. Um, and that's pretty much the schools do here. And I think any school and daycare is going to be the same way. Um, can you imagine not bringing a daycare right now? I mean, try keeping kids that are four years old, six feet away from each other. I mean, like they don't give a shit. It's <laughs> like, Oh, I want to play. Um, I suppose you could put them in cages, but last I checked, the uh, the, uh, the child protection services says I can't do that anymore. That's why Chris doesn't have kids. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. That's bad. Uh, that's just a joke, people. Um, 
So I don't know how daycare is going to operate in the future. I mean, so look around your world. Uh, if you're if you're somebody, you know, like I say, the Chris Foss show has always been an entrepreneur show, uh, giving advice to help entrepreneurs and people that want to go into business. And of course, now uh, more than ever, we'll be focused on different things like that because we want to give people tools that they can take and use to start their own businesses and stuff. But this is definitely going to be a challenge because um, you're you have to retool your thinking for any new business you're starting or any business that you have going on. You've got to start looking around and going, uh, how do we change our business models, what we do, uh, how we do things, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I don't know how daycare is going to work. I'm not even sure it can work. Um, so you're, I think as, as a company, you're just going to plan on having employees that have their kids at home. And so if you can have them work at home and telecommute, then that's what they're going to have to do. You know, you're going to have to come up with a system where you can take and uh, validate what they're doing, that they're doing their job, that they're uh, performing, uh, you know, that they're not just sitting around watching Netflix all day, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, it's going to become quite challenging, and, and I think it's going to lower productivity. So productivity is something you're going to have to factor into your business model and your profit margins and everything else. Certainly, if people are working at home, uh, there's going to be challenges to productivity. There's going to be challenges to communication. Uh, one of the games that I really like playing is uh, the Division Two, and the company that produces it is called Massive. Um, and they've been having massive challenges with their communication because everyone's working at home all of a sudden. And because they're a tech company and people code at home, it works fairly well for them to keep operational. But the problem they're having is the communication. Like you, you know, you can't just walk over to Bob or lean around your corner of your cubicle and go, Hey Bob, you got that uh, code on that, uh, whatever, whatever. Um, and they've actually had some problems where people uploaded stuff that was supposed to stay in the sandbox of testing. Um, and they pushed it live and really have, they've really just been making a muck up of a mess. Um, but you can see a lot of their challenges and they, and they, and they spoke about it recently is communication um, and follow up with people and being able to get everybody on the same page. And they're spending a lot of time and losing a lot of productivity on all this calling about. And, you know, you just can't walk over and talk to somebody. You can't meet in a room and go, okay, let's all get on one page. Um, it's, it's a real challenge. And of course you've got one guy who can push an update to screw up the whole system as, as opposed to, you know, somebody double checking his work and all that sort of good stuff. So if you own a company or business, you're going to have to start thinking about all these different ways that you need to, uh, rechange your model so that you can take and address these aspects so you can maximize productivity. And I think it's going to be an incredible challenge for businesses going forward at maximizing their pro productivity, uh, making sure business is getting done, calls are getting done, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, when you're calling people uh, on Zoom and they're, you know, you don't know if they have their pants on for that day or whatever. I remember my big thing on Skype years ago was uh, sometimes I'd be a little hungover and I'd call my clients and I'd be like, and my clients would need to do a consulting call and I'd be like, um, yeah, my camera's giving on the glitch today, so let's we'll just do audio. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just all hungover. <laughs> um, but, you know, they got good advice. I mean, that's really, you don't pay to look at me. <laughs> it's not, not that kind of webcam star. I mean, seriously, look at this face. Would you pay for this? Uh, if you would, I don't know. Uh, just let me know how much put it in the chat. <laughs> so these are some of the different things you're going to have to look at as a business. And you're going to have to rethink your model. You're going to have to rethink your profit margin. You're going to rethink your revenue uh, basis and um, productivity. I mean, if you can, how, how you can make money with less. I mean, certainly if you're, uh, I was reading about this, uh, these hair salons now, you have to get rid of all of the, the, I mean, there was one hair salon, I believe it was in Georgia or someplace. They had a bar, they had a pool table, they had a, I, I know where the hair salon I go is a sports um, hair place for men. And, you know, it's got these tight rows of chairs that are all these stadium like chairs. And, and you watch some TV, some football and stuff they always have on. Uh, you know, now you're going to have to take all those chairs out. You're going to have to, you, you won't have a waiting room. There may be some businesses that you may have to set up some sort of queue outside of your business. I know my local stores have a queue. Uh, they have people walking around, making sure people are staying six feet apart. 
Um, uh, there's a lot of different things we're going to have to look at in this new world. It's not going to go back to being business as normal. And like I say, I think you're going to have to look at some liability for some of this stuff and everything else. I think I might bring one of my good friends um, onto the show who's a uh, attorney in California, in Orange County, and uh, I might bring him on to talk about liability issues and everything else. You know, my biggest fear would be getting wrongful death lawsuits or or something like that, where someone would be like, we got the virus from you. Uh, certainly you're seeing these pork factories and uh, uh, meat packaging fa- factories that are in the middle of America up in South Dakota and stuff. They have like 800 employees that got infected. And um, their business models are designed to be very squished together. They have locker rooms that are very small. You know, everything is designed to, for maximizing space. And uh, they've, I guess they put in these little plastic things uh, to put between people. But uh, I don't know how effective it is. Like I went to the store uh, shortly after this sort of epidemic started. And they they put up these plexiglass pieces in front of the cash register at the store. And I'm like, uh, and I've seen the diagrams that they have of how when you cough, when you breathe, or you sneeze how that spreads through the air in this cloud. That's pretty crazy. And what was funny was the place that I went into, they had this plexiglass thing right in front of the guy, but you don't stand right in front of the guy when you're at the counter. You stand off to the right where the where the Visa machine was. And meanwhile, I'm just looking directly at him. The plexiglass is over here, and you're just like, yeah, that's not really working the way you thought it would be. I mean, the the real way would be to do is to pack the glass completely off the employee and it, or encase them. And I heard that some companies uh, like Safeway and uh, grocery store companies in in uh, Colorado were talking about that. They were talking about literally encasing the employee in pack glass and then whatever. So I guess in a lot of cases it may come down to where. We've got to pass the glass each other off. Like I, I know when I go to the banks in Vegas, when you go to the banks in Vegas, I mean, you're just used to that. I mean, they have bulletproof freaking. it's like one inch bulletproof, uh, latex plastic. I don't know what the hell, you know, sort of thing is, but it's designed to be bulletproof. And you literally feel like you either you're in prison or they're in prison and you're having a conversation. Like you're like, you shove your money under the little, and, and, uh, that's a technical term, by the way. Um, but, you know, and then they got the little the breather holes through the through the plastic so you can, you know, whatever. And they got a lot of microphone. You're like, you're not there. And they're like, hey, man, I want some cash. And they're like, what? I carry you. And you're like, I carry you. And so that's going to probably be our new future. But, uh, yeah, if you're a public-facing company with a public-facing business that you make money directly off the public coming into your store or by your place, you're just going to have to get used to this. I was watching some of the Wuhan businesses, and literally a lot of shops that have businesses, you literally come to the door, and they have like a table that blocks the door, and the employee can be at the other side, you know, kind of on the inside of the business. You can, he, it's got the door pushed open, and you know, it's like, hey, what do you want? Right, give me, Give me some of that, and away you go. So, and I think if that goes on long enough, we're going to have a hard time with commercial real estate. Uh, I think malls are definitely going to have an issue, but you know, you're, you're going to look at it from a fact, like why do I need like 8,000 square foot of commercial real estate when I've just got people going to the front door and I could, instead of having like, I've had mall stores before and you know, you got mall stores, you've got the clothing set up and there's a place for the for the employee, the, the public to tramps through and, you know, look at the different uh, circles of, of stuff. Um, you know, now you're going to have to be like, do you want this? Online is going to be really important. I think more and more as a business, you're going to look at online your inventory, online what you're trying to sell. Um, I saw some places that they have like an iPad sitting there. And so what they do is they go, okay, well, you know, here's our store inventory. Go through it. Show us what you want. Probably going to have a little problem with the changing rooms if you want to try on a shirt or something. (laughs) So businesses are going to have to look at that as well. I mean, if someone definitely isn't able to order something the way they want, you know, 
Uh, they're going to have to have good return policies, et cetera, et cetera. Some businesses, if they aren't on Amazon, probably going to want to move to Amazon. That's going to be a big, huge thing. Um, another thing you're going to want to do, and I've seen a lot of restaurants and fast food places adopting to this, is delivery. Is delivery service. You may want to start looking at your business, and this might be good because if you're looking at laying off employees, you're like, hey, man, we don't know if we these employees can do stuff for us, if they can... Um, if they can, you know, if we can keep them on board, get them into delivery business. If delivery is an aspect you can take and do. So if you've got customers that you've got a base in, dig through them and say, Hey, would would it be easier if we delivered our product to you? And, uh, remember we're here for you. You definitely, hopefully at this point have put them all on a MailChimp list so that they're getting, uh, MailChimp mailers from you. Uh, text message lists, I would start collecting with all your clients, their emails and text numbers so that you can put them on a text message list for sales and everything else. Um, one thing I heard from a company today, they go, we're, we're looking at cutting back our marketing budgets. This is not a time that you want to cut back on marketing. Marketing is really important. If you don't, I mean, I, there might be some extraneous things that are in your budget for marketing, but marketing is really important. You start cutting back that marketing budget, you're going to have a problem. Now, you may need to scale the marketing budget to uh, the new profit areas or the new margin areas that you're going to have with the, you know, what I've been talking about so far with your business. So that may become an aspect, but you know, even then maybe you need to put an employee out in the corner, flip on one of those signs or whatever. At least you don't have to worry about them too much getting those things. Letting people know you're in business is really important as well too. I've actually been contacting people on my list going, Hey, Chris Foss show is still in business. We're still reviewing product on our YouTube and everything else that we do. Um, so let's still do some business. And everyone's like, Oh, okay. We thought everyone was, uh, off doing whatever, but good to know you are. So let's do some business. Um, that's going to become real important, uh, in letting people know I, if I had employees instead of laying one off, uh, I'd have one work the corner with one of those flip signs being like, Hey, we're in business. Come on by, check it out. I definitely be, uh, if I didn't have a list on, on MailChimp or something, a mailing list, I'd definitely get that thing started going. Maybe, um, you know, you really have an aspect of calling employees or calling customers, but I don't know, hopefully you had some sort of disclosure that said, Hey, we might call you every now and then, or maybe you have a call list of employees. Um, offering discounts, of course, is a great way to do that, but I would start building uh, a text message list where you can text people and start asking them for the phone numbers. Same thing with a mailing list where you can offer people discounts and everything else. Uh, definitely to get stuff going on. There was one app that I've had their CEO on a few times. We, pre- re- we reviewed them at CES and interviewed them. Uh, it was the Gifter app, gift3rappapp.com. Um, you can check out that thing. That's a great way to sell um, uh, gift certificates. Groupon would be a great thing to go back to. The great thing about like Groupons and stuff is people can use those online. They can buy them, and many times they don't fulfill them. And so that can give you a cash flow uh, thing as well. But I would be looking at all my employees uh, before I start laying them off at different ways that I could utilize them for marketing. And I think that's really smart. Maybe put them out. Uh, to drum a business, uh, maybe have them do flyers. I mean, I've done old school flyers door to door, baby. I did that a long time ago. Uh, it's not that profitable. It's a bit challenging, but if it, if it means keeping an employee, uh, that you want to retain, uh, from putting them on the street, maybe have them go do flyers, um, post things, all that sort of good stuff. There's no large groups of places. So maybe they, we need to go to do, more door to door stuff. I remember there was a long time here where we used to have meat delivered door to door. It wasn't very good meat. Usually if you had to deliver it, it was questionable, but you know, there used to be like these little vans that would drive around, deliver meat. I know there's a lot of, uh, food delivery services that are probably going to do well, like milk and everything else. Uh, it was kind of funny. I went to my, uh, local, uh, seven 11, Notice they're now selling big things of bleach. They had like a whole bleach stand. And I don't remember ever seeing a bleach stand there. Uh, And I was like, wow, okay. So everything's about cleaning supplies and everything else. So um, when it comes to products and sales and what you're doing, maybe take a look at how you can deliver more uh, value to your customer and everything else. 
Um, I think education, education, uh, different online stuff that can help children is going to be big. That can help parents, uh, you know, teach their children, educate their children, keep them engaged in some sort of learning is going to be a challenge. Um, these are just a lot of different things that I think are going to be aspects that we're going to have to deal with in the future. And if you're a business, some of the different things you're going to have to take into account with your models, your business modeling and what you're building, or if you're an entrepreneur looking to go in business, what it is. Uh, if you're gain, uh, recently unemployed and uh, you're wondering what you're going to do with your time, go back and listen to the previous shows on the Chris Voss show. Uh, me being unemployed were some of the most productive times I had where I actually started businesses and uh, made them turn them into multi-million dollar companies. Um, this is a great time, especially if you can get some payment to ride you out, either from an employer, uh, separation payments, or unemployment. Uh, you definitely want to look at for your job and cover your bases. But for some of you, this might be a great time to figure out a way to deal with the new economy, uh, whether you're uh, being a uh, a special luxury grocer for some people, uh, not necessarily doing the giant Instacart thing, uh, but you're maybe doing some, you, you've got some high end clients that you can do the shopping for and delivery, things of that nature. Uh, delivery service would be good to do right now. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, custom shoppers. Uh, there's a lot of different things I'm sure they're going to go into, uh, this new economy. So if you're unemployed, take a look for the opportunities there. So I gave some different ideas on the prior, uh, Chris Voss shows, go back to the last 10 shows. There's a lot of good stuff on there. A lot of concepts that I, I share with you and a lot of opportunities that maybe you can take advantage of, or at least to kind of give you so, some thoughts on, Hey, what can I do now? And, this is the time that a lot of people change their lives and find new directions, start companies, start new revenue streams, and are thankful that they went through this. Um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, what's the great story about uh, the gal who made the books over in England, the Harry Potter books? And she made them because she was unemployed. She was on welfare. She was out of work and she was depressed. And like the only thing she could do was library and read books and stuff. And so she sat down and decided to write, write books as just a kind of way to pass the time and, and deal with, uh, you know, trying to get through life. And now she's a billionaire. So there you go. And uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity in what people can have and do and what you want to do. Don't don't spend all your time vegging out in front of the Netflix machine. Try and figure out how you can change your life and do things better. And uh, if you don't start your own company, try and figure out how you can maybe do things better at your work. Certainly, if you work for somebody, the best employees, the employees that can deliver the most highest value to a company are going to be the ones they're going to retain as layoffs come as economic belts tighten, as the economy tightens, we're definitely going to a recession, people. We're already, we don't need to see two, we don't need to see two quarters of uh, negative GDP to know that we're in a recession. If you can't look at these employment numbers, look at what's going on with oil and how oil prices are going to affect everything in the market between gas stations' profitability, between oil producers' profitability, between all those people that were oil producers in North Dakota and South Dakota where they were running those rigs. They're going to have to lay all those people off. I mean, the price of oil is just, there's no demand for it. And there's literally, if you've looked, there's all these ships out on the thing. Maybe you can figure out a way to, uh, I don't know, do some of that oil or store it or something. I don't know, whatever you can do. Take a look at your local community, see what you can contribute there. So there's some ideas. I appreciate you guys tuning in to the Chris Foss Show. Uh, be sure to go to the com. You can check out all our podcasts there. You can go to uh, iTunes. Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Uh, the Chris Foss Show is found everywhere with over 500, almost 500 shows now. And uh, you can tune in, play them all, listen to them all. There's all, lots of great interviews, lots of great ideas you might have from great entrepreneurs and startups and everything else. There's the eight total podcasts we have at Chris Foss podcastnetwork.com or the cvpn you can go there and subscribe to them all there's the pop biz podcast the crypto life podcast the um what else is there there's a book author podcast uh there's eight of them so i'm losing track now there's the resistance radio podcast and so if you get a chance check that out it's at twitter at resist uh radio pod 
Uh, and uh, yeah, man, there's uh, something for everyone over there. There's even spatial computing one for your AI VR people, AR folks. So we've got a podcast for that. And uh, I can't remember what the other podcasts are. This is so many podcasts. So anyway, go check that out at chrisvosspodcastnetwork.com. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Be sure to uh, subscribe to the show, refer it to your friends, neighbors, relatives. You see this on Periscope. Uh, give it a retweet. We certainly appreciate that way. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you next time.